Impact segment tonight, my second Talking Points memo. Authorities in Missouri are bracing for racial protests when the grand jury hands up its decision about whether or not to indict police officer Darren Wilson in the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown. That decision could come at any time. In the media and political world, some liberal people continue to convict Officer Wilson. Last night, Bernie Goldberg and I discussed comments made by civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis. He's comparing the case in Ferguson, Missouri to Selma, Alabama, while lamenting police shooting young black men all over the country. The congressman is calling for justice, and I believe that's why federal, state, and local authorities are involved. And I believe that's why their findings have been put before a grand jury. So, congressman, let the system function. If the fix is in and you can prove it, I'll be right there with you. In the media, the Michael Brown investigation and subsequent leaks were up for discussion on The View. What they're doing is they're baiting the people to react. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, that's what I'm Well, or they're about. saying that's a gross injustice about. is about to be ignored and people are going to get pissed. Well, you we can get know. pissed, but that doesn't mean you have to be violent. Well, Nobody's that's saying that's that they're going to be violent. And they're what saying... is an injustice? You're saying that if he isn't indicted, that's a gross injustice? You, I mean, you uh, weren't in the grand jury room. I mean, correct, you, I was not, but I, as an American, feel of it's very wrong to shoot unarmed teenagers six times once in the head. Again, no one knows exactly what happened, so let's see what the grand jury says. Joining us now from St. Louis, the attorney for the family of Michael Brown, Benjamin Crump. First of all, counsel, do you have any hint of when the grand jury's decision will be made? Uh, Bill, we only know that they have got to the end of their work, and we should be hearing something pretty soon, and they're going to inform the family uh, out of respect before they inform the public. Okay, now the grand jury sits tomorrow, all right, correct? They meet tomorrow. That's what we understand. So you would assume that would happen tomorrow? Uh, again, they're going to give us notice, so we don't know for certain. Okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out why people like Rosie O'Donnell, she's not alone, are so adamant about convicting this police officer. I, I, I'm not sure why they do it. Do you, do you know why, Counselor? Well, Mr. O'Reilly, I think they uh, want to make sure there's a constitutional trial by jury that there would be due process for Michael Brown Jr. as well as the police officer. Um, the troubling thing is if there are no charges bought, then Michael Brown's family doesn't even get to have their day in court where it would be transparent and everybody would get to see the evidence and the witnesses. Uh, but that's that our system, them. though. But you, the grand jury would have to present, and so would the federal, state, and local authorities, all of them. They would have to present to the public, to you, to the family, why there was no indictment if indeed that happened. So you would see how they came to that conclusion. And the grand jury members then could give interviews, they could talk about it, whatever. But our system is that the grand jury decides whether an indictment is handed down. It doesn't go straight to trial. So are you saying you don't believe in the system, Counselor? I'm saying the way this uh, process was handled, I, we've objected from the, the beginning, Mr. O'Reilly, that they didn't need to have this matter to the grand jury. There was enough evidence there to have probable cause to charge the police officer. There were seven eyewitnesses. There was forensic evidence. And remember, probable cause, Mr. O'Reilly, is just a tipping scale. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. The police officer will still get his day in court. He will have all his full constitutional rights of innocent until proven guilty. However, when you think about how this process is being done, it's different from any other grand jury process. Uh, the prosecutor has said, we're not going to recommend any charges. We're just going to put all the evidence out there and let everybody, all the jurors, figure it out for themselves because we just want to be fair. Well, the problem with that as it relates to equal justice. So does that mean 28 years of him being the prosecutor when he presented things to grand juries, he was being unfair to everybody else? Don't change the rules when it's our children lying on the ground. We just want equal justice. If there's probable cause to charge, you charge. If there's not, you don't. But don't change but the system. But he didn't want to make that decision himself. 
um, because it's such a volatile situation. Look, I understand what you're saying, but I, I believe that the system, the way the state of Missouri has handled it, and this goes right up to the federal government as well, Holder, Eric Holder, goes right in there, will present the evidence one way or another so that fair-minded people will say, okay, but I could be wrong, and counselor, if, if you think it's uh, the fix is in or something like that, again, as I said, I'll be there if I see the evidence. If not, then I will be an opponent. And we appreciate you coming on. And w when you get, you know, tomorrow, if it comes down, we want to talk to you. Because we respect your opinion, and we want the family to have justice. Go ahead. Thank you word. so much. Okay. Directly ahead, do black Americans have a legitimate point in believing the justice system is stacked against them? We'll debate the question. And later, Dick Cavett on the funniest Americans ever. Up ahead.